Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. And today we are going to learn how to use time points in Abacus CAE. This is one of the amazing feature of Abacus CAE, which many people are not aware of, hence they don't use it. What time points basically does is, it tells Abacus in which time interval you want to save your output database. The two big advantages of using time points are, first, it reduces the output file size. So the result file created by Abacus, which is .odb file, that will be much, much smaller. And as that file is smaller, that means Abacus has to spend less time on writing results. Hence, the simulations run faster. In a simple way, how time points work is, let's say you are doing dynamic analysis and this is your time scale. This is t equal to zero and time is increasing in this direction. Now in field output request or history output request, we have to tell Abacus at which interval Abacus should save output parameters to a result file. So during this entire time scale, Abacus will save output parameters at some specific intervals as shown over here. But sometime you are not interested in what happens on entire time scale. You are interested only in this small portion what happens over here. But to see that also you have to save the output parameters for entire time scale. And exactly this thing can be avoided using time points. When you use time points, you have to tell Abacus the starting time point, which is T1, then an ending time point, which is T2. So in this case here, I'm showing just zoomed version from here. So this is T1, this is T2. And then you also have to define the increment between these two points. So here I am defining increment as delta T. Now if you raise a history output request or field output request, then you can tell Abacus to save the results only for time in between T1 and T2 with interval delta T. Nothing will be saved here, nothing will be saved here. And that saves a lot of space and time. Now let's see one example and how to do this. This is the geometry of example shown over here. It is a two dimensional plate fixed at one end and there is some pressure on the other end. All the dimensions are given over here. Dimensions are in millimeters. We will assume material as steel. These are the material properties. Thickness of plate is given over here. And what we will do is we will provide amplitude for this load. And that amplitude is shown over here. So we'll increase the load gradually and then suddenly decrease it and again keep that constant. And this amplitude is given in tabular form over here. You can see first pressure is increasing. It reaches its maximum value and then suddenly it decreases from 1 to 0.1 amplitude. And after that it is constant. The total time of simulation is 10 seconds. And in this case, ideally we are interested only in this region. When amplitude suddenly decreases, we want to see how stress or strain is changing within this plate. This is just very basic example. Of course, we can just save the result for all time step. But I just want to show you the importance of time points. So we'll solve this example two times. First, with using time points and then without time points. When we are using time points, what we will do is we will give starting time as five seconds. So somewhere over here, then end time will be six seconds, which is exactly over here and time increment of 0.01 second. So within this five to six second only, Abacus will save all the output parameters with the interval of 0.01. And then when we run without time points, we will save at 0.01 second all across the time. Let's start with Abacus CAE. First, set your working directory and then let's create a part. It should be 3D deformable and then shell. Say continue, then create a rectangle. Let's dimension it. Width is 25 and length is 160. Now to apply that pressure, I will create a partition over here. For that, choose partition with sketch option. Select the right side line and then create a partition like this. The distance of this line from this edge should be 10 millimeter. And partition is done. Next, go to property. Here I will create material steel. We have to define first density. Now density of steel is 8050 kg per meter cube, but we are sticking with SI mm units. So we have to convert this to ton per millimeter cube. And for that we have to multiply this by E raised to minus 12. Then mechanical elastic. Young's modulus is 210 gigapascal. Again, we will convert it to megapascal. Poison's ratio 0.3. Then let's create a section. I will name this as well as steel. And it should be shell homogeneous. 
say continue thickness value 1 millimeter say ok and then assign the section to both parts steel say ok next go to assembly create a instance next step i am going to create dynamic implicit step say continue time period i will change to 10 as we want 10 seconds i will turn nonlinear geometry on go to increments over here i will just increase this maximum number of increments and i will make this initial as 0.1 you don't have to change anything else over here say ok then go to load first let's fix this end so for that go to initial step say continue select that edge and i will just fix all degrees of freedom next we have to apply pressure over here for that select this load step 1 and select pressure say continue and select this surface it will ask you brown or purple i will select brown magnitude 0 0.1 megapascal say ok now you can see pressure is applied one end is fixed now we will provide amplitude to this pressure for that double click on this amplitude say tabular continue and then just insert this table over there did that say ok and now go back to that load which we just defined and here select amplitude 1 say ok next go to mesh here change it to part first go to mesh then controls select this entire region and select structured mesh then let's seed the part let's see how much it's global size 10 i think it is 2 cores let's make it 2.5 apply say ok also go to mesh element type again select the entire region check if element type is shell or not it should be shell say ok then mesh it now the time points if you scroll up here you will see time points over here so just double click on that say continue and then select specify using delimiters here we will define the starting time which is 5 seconds end time which is 6 seconds and increment 0.01 say ok now you will see one time point over here you can define multiple time points together as well and you can raise multiple field output or history output requests now by default there will be one history output request and also one field output request if you double click on this it will be for every n increments and n value will be 10 this i will change it to from time points and as we have only one time point you can see that it's selected by default if you have multiple you can choose whichever you like and then say ok similarly for history output request i will just make this to time points and choose our time point say ok that's it now we will create a job i will name it as with time points continue say ok and then submit this job it will show a warning what this means is in that specific time zone abacus will use the increment which you already defined so here you can see now we are in between 5 to 6 so the increment is used 0.01 this can be larger but we want to save the output that's why here abacus will force itself to use 0.01 once we go beyond 6 then again abacus will use larger increment you can see now we are after 6 and increment is increased to 0.1 job is done let's see the results now what you will see over here is this is the stress field and if you see the frame over here it has 102 frames if you go back it starts at 0 where time step is 0 and if you just go to the next frame it will be at 5 so abacus did not save anything for time between 0 to 5 seconds and after 5 it will save after every 0.01 second so if you go ahead you will see after every 0.01 second it is saving the output and this is the area what we are interested in because now amplitude is changing you can see the plate is moving because of that because amplitude is reducing and it will go up to 6 and after 6 again directly to the 10 now let's do this without time points to do that what we will do is we will just go over here and say every n increment and i will choose value of n as 1 similarly history output request 
every n increment choose this value 1 and without time point also we are interested to see what happens in this region right so in this region we want time step at 0 0.01 but if we don't use time point we have to define that for entire time scale therefore we'll go to step we will make this incrementation fix and increment size 0 0.01 say ok then create another job without time points say continue ok and submit it now in this case Abacus has to use interval 0 0.01 all the way from 0 to 10 seconds. Another point to note over here is with this fixed increment in step, we can use time points and still our simulation will be faster and ODB file will be smaller. I am showing comparison between two extreme things but with this fixed, if you use time points, still you will see the advantage of faster simulations and reduced space requirement. Three days later done let's see the results now in this case you can see there are large number of data points plate is actually moving between 5 to 6 the most after 6 you can see plate is not moving much but still we save data for that which is not adding any value to the simulation results so we can avoid that now let me show you the file sizes this is with time points odb file 15.8 MB and this is without time points 101 MB. So overall in output file size we reduce the file size from 141 to 16 MB which is almost 88% saving in space and for simulation time without time points it took 382 seconds where with time point it took 78 seconds hence almost 5 times faster. That's it for this video. If you like this video please show your support by subscribing to this channel which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you are interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.